we're going to do a bit of a problem down here in the workshop and this is common whenever you're doing a project this is the back of the table and you can see here I've put wood filler in and I've also put wood filler in here and I'm not too concerned with that because it is on the bottom of the table it's a bit more more wood filler than I would like but that's you know the way it goes but over here I was putting in an excessive amount of wood filler and I still had failure of the wood. I don't know if you can see that because the wood is split. Maybe a saw blade got under there or the uh, the wood has just failed along the, uh, the grain. In any case, this is a bit more than what I'm comfortable with. So what I'm going to do is install what's known as a Dutchman. I've made a jig and as I told you before, woodworking is a lot about making jigs. And this jig is so that I can put a router in and have a guide for my router. So I just push it up against the edge of the wood and off I go. And it works great. The idea here is, is that I will route out a quarter inch deep all the way around and when I'm done I will cut a piece of wood to fit into the cavity and glue it into the cavity and then sand it smooth and that'll take care of this structural deformity so we'll get busy on that so I have the camera inside the uh, the jig and I'm just going to get started. I'll show you what it looks like. Then I'm going to have to obviously stop the camera. So as you can see, I've routed out a pocket in here and I'll cut a piece of wood that will glue into that. Then I've gotten rid of all that split pine that was weak in here. And what that allows me to do is have a, a much more solid base. And that is essentially what a Dutchman looks like. And you can see it stands very proud. So what I'm going to do is trim this down or uh, not trim it down, but I'll run it through the planer. And that'll give me a piece that fits very snugly in there with a little bit of gaps here and there, but it's structurally sound and that's what's important. So 
I think that was probably the better option. I was hoping to avoid it because it's more work. But at the end of the day, it, it works better. And you can see that it's not pine. This happens to be oak. It's because that's what I had laying around the workshop. I wasn't going to go out and buy a, a piece of pine for a Dutchman to waste three quarters of it. So I'll rip this down on the table saw and plane it smooth and glue it up and put it in. And that'll take care of that problem. So there's the tabletop, the bottom of it, with the Dutchman complete. You can see that they're completely recessed now after planing them to thickness and then sanding. They, uh, they sit flush with the tabletop and those are bigger Dutchmen than you would usually see on a table. They're for small repairs normally, but again, the idea was to keep this table as thick as I can, and it's about one and five-eighths inch thick, maybe one and three-quarter. If I had elected to machine this side of the table without any defects, I would have had to have taken at least another quarter inch off the table, and that would have made it thinner. And one of the requirements or one of the desires was that the table be as thick as possible. So that's it. The table's complete. It's sanded to 220. All I need to do now is stain and polyurethane. This is the back of the table. And as I said, it's not as appealing as you would normally like on a table, but this is the back. To, uh, to have made this a little bit clearer, I would have had to have planed a great deal more off. Back in the beginning, I talked about when I was selecting the, the wood, that the decisions I made that day would determine the overall character of the table. And on that day, I decided which boards I was going to use for the table and which board or the table top and which boards I would use for the skirt. And once I had determined that, I decided which side of the board would be facing up. And this is what we end up with. It's got some nice character. Like I said, it's knotty pine. Stain this up and I'll show you pictures of it when it's done. And that's the complete tabletop. The last part, of course, is the skirt. I'm going to come get the camera and show you a little bit about the skirt. When I was selecting the wood, the one thing I noticed is that I had one piece that was mostly clear and that's what I decided the skirt was going to be. Now as I was machining it I noticed two pieces had this resiny type of wood right here. So what I did was as I was deciding which side would face out, which would be up, I kept that in mind. And I put that up at the top because once the tabletop's on, that'll be mostly covered. There's one there and the corresponding one right there. On the outside, it's mostly clear. Very little in the way of knots. So that wouldn't have gone well with the knotty pine on the tabletop. And that's why I decided that particular board would be the skirt. But that's it. The project is complete, except for the staining, and like I said, I'll, I'll take pictures of that when it's done.